Because of your theory, several laws of physics may need to be re-examined. What if I told you that I just invented a device that could create an infinite amount of clean, free energy from space and just a little bit of water? Really, that simple. What's the answer to the energy crisis? Suppose a fellow told you the answer was in a machine he has developed. Before you scoff, take a look with Bruce Hall. It requires the input of no energy, none whatsoever, and it just runs anyway. What if someone invented a machine that would make the gasoline engine obsolete? What if someone invented a machine that produced more energy than it used? And that energy is cheap, non-polluting, and safe. In fact, it's better than requiring no energy to run. It actually runs merely on a, a little bit of coal. And it really works. That person would probably be hailed as the greatest scientist since Einstein, with a discovery as important as electricity and as revolutionary as the wheel. It's raised over $2.9 million on IndieStarter.com and promises to revolutionize what we mean when we say clean, renewable power. That is, energy machine could power every American home, farm, business, automobile, an appliance with electricity at a fraction of the present cost. This is the story of how one man devoted his life to solving the world's energy crisis. This is the story of how the world's first space steam engine was made. Well, what I've got here is a remarkable steam engine that runs on space. So what you've actually got is uh, two flasks connected by a glass tube and both are actually have really high vacuum taps on. So there's a total vacuum on the inside. Well, not an entire total vacuum. There's a bit of water here. And this tap here is open. So not really anything is happening. This is room temperature water, by the way. Nothing special about this at all. Now what happens when I cool this down a bit? So this is just, I'm putting a little bit of ice on, on this vessel. And there you go. If I take the ice off, we'll see. Let's try again from another angle. So we put the cold on. Can you give it a little jiggle? And off he goes. And I take the ice off. Now, I know what some of you be thinking, that this really isn't a space-powered engine. To which the answer is, oh yes, but it is. So, what I've got here in the background is um, a vacuum pump. So I've now got the whole thing tied up to uh, a vacuum pump in the background there. So I can actually selectively vent the, the pressure, which I can do here. So first things first, I'm going to open this tap to the vacuum. And then I'm just going to get let in a tiny amount of pressure. So when this says 1000, that means there's one atmosphere in it. So let's just gently bleed in a tiny amount of pressure. There you go. So 40 millibar, almost nothing. But let's do a little more. Almost 100 millibar, a tenth of an atmosphere. That's about half the atmospheric pressure on top of Mount Everest. I'm going to close the tap again. So now this, it's not got space in my apparatus here. It's just got one tenth of an atmosphere. If you were exposed to an atmosphere that thin, <laughs> you would pass out and die basically instantly. So now let's try exactly the same deal again. I'm going to cool this down. I'm going to 
see what happens. And the answer is no, nothing. So first of all, I'm going to show you how I made this remarkable little beastie. And then in the next video, I'm going to explain how it works. So the first challenge is going to be able to turn all this junk here into a space steam engine. So the first thing that we're going to need is the ability to take some space and bring it down to earth. And it turns out you can hold space, it's basically a vacuum, inside a glass flask, although not obviously this one, because um, it needs worth stopping it up. So that's what I'm going to do first. Now you are going to need some glass spectacles so you're not blinded by all the orange light that comes off the glass. as good as I can get. Okay, we have something that can hold space. These taps are fantastic by the way, these hold almost a perfect vacuum. Good, so here I've got a vacuum pump. Uh, in fact, I've got two vacuum pumps. This is one of the vacuum pumps. This is another van one of the vacuum pumps. This is where I can attach stuff. And this is the vacuum meter, which tells me the vacuum gauge, which tells me at the moment there's 1,000 millibars of pressure. Bar is basically an atmosphere. So there's one atmosphere of pressure here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my vacuum vessel to the line and the pump on. Now, the lowest pressure you can get on Earth um, while being on the ground is about this. This is about the pressure that you get on top of Mount Everest. It's about 
third quarter of an atmosphere, something like that. But we're going to go much lower than that. So we're now down to about one tenth of an atmosphere in here. That's one twentieth of an atmosphere. And at about this time, I'm going to go over to the, uh, the rotary pump because that pulls a, a much harsher vacuum. There we go. So that'll speed it down a bit. And it'll get down to about uh, one, two millibars, that sort of thing. So that's one thousandth of an atmosphere of pressure, which is actually pretty close to what you get in space. You know, space is a pretty decent zero. This will get down to about one millibar. So what happens to water essentially in space? So let's take a look at that. These things have absolutely remarkable seals on these taps. So that, you should be able to see the, the seal. Yeah, just here. Beautiful. So I'm going to add some water on top of the tap. And you can tell there's an absolutely perfect seal there. Otherwise, you'd be able to see it sucking the water into the vacuum. You just gently open the tap and suck just a little bit of that water into the vacuum. There we go, and I stop there. And as you can see, water boils vigorously in space. Well, not so much. This time, I'm gonna go full veins. The way we're gonna do it, is again with the five minute epoxy. Two more and we're done. Five minutes and we will have Thing. So I'm just going to trim that down afterwards. First of all on top, I think. A little more circular. Good. So there we go. One little vein. It will be sprung by the time he gets in where he needs to go, which is in here. with a high staked join. So I'm gonna narrow that down about there. And then join that on. Hopefully, again, while keeping the rest as cool as possible. Seal, good. Good. Guts of the steam engine are ready. So now, to attach that on there, so now. Good, tail. Good. 
Good. Good. All right. Annealing is very difficult with a piece of glass like this. I bet it survives the cooling. Now I've got this thing, which is a high voltage leak de detector. So what you'll see, if there are any leaks or pinholes, the spark will jump. You get pretty decent sparks off this thing. But if there are any pinholes, the spark will leak to the pinhole. So far nothing. Oh, there's a pin out. You see it? Bugger. Getting three millibars still, but... Hey, the leak. Very easy to see, huh? This is mending the pinhole. Hopefully, oh, I've done it. So at the moment, I've got water here and everything else is just full of vacuum. So we're closed on this tap, closed on this tap. This tap is open. So there's vapor pressure of water all throughout here. But if I start condensing the water vapor here, the water vapor from this side is gonna go all the way through here and spin my little disc, right? So I start cooling it down and a little tap, a little tap. And there you go, one space-powered steam engine. If I take my ice away. As this guy heats up, there's no need for the water to go over here anymore. And that's it, it stopped. It's an engine powered by water vapor and space. There you go. And it'll go, so really, really pretty fast. And if I take the ice off. It slows down. Amazing, eh? And that's the story of how the world's first space steam engine was made. And if you thought that was kind of cool, the awesome power of water 
give this video a thumbs up. And hell, live a little for the unlimited free power and hit that subscribe button. And while Indie Starter might not be the best place to help this channel make really cool videos like this, if you liked what you saw, you can support this channel directly through Patreon. And I'll leave the links below.